here we go. Hello. <laughs> hello. Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome. Welcome uh, to a new series that uh, we start today. Uh, it's called Contemporary Music Talks. And uh, yeah, in this series, we, we will um, approach all the ideas and the concept uh, of uh, contemporary music. Uh, so the, mu the research, research music of the last uh, 100 years, basically. Uh, so we are going in every single episode to, to talk and to speak with a different guest about one of the topics that we choose. And uh, hello, I help. I'm stuck in a loop. Hello, Pilburg. Hello, Moldy Pretzel and Silve. Hello, everyone. And uh, the guest for today is uh, Analog Weapon, Nick. <laughs> uh, and uh, the topic for today is uh, the soundscape. Soundscape, which is a very interesting topic. Um, Oh, of course, uh, let me know in the chat if the volumes are okay, if there are any issues. Uh, here seems everything fine uh, from my side, but of course, let me know. And uh, yeah, soundscape, soundscape. Um, what's a soundscape? <laughs> That's a yeah, good question. That's where I started. Yeah. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> like I was saying before we started, um, it's some of these terms are were actually a little new to me but as i read it I, I realize it's something i already had a concept of it's just you know formalized into a term that i that i wasn't familiar with you know <laughs> yeah exactly the you know you have the idea in mind but uh you don't have the name of course uh, yeah <laughs> the exact uh, yeah. term uh well uh, soundscape i think uh, the the um, the origin of the word itself is kind of blurry, so we don't know who used it uh, for the first time. Uh, but of course, the most important um, composer that used it is uh, Schaffer, uh, who is um, a Canadian composer, uh, who started using it uh, and uh, developing some ideas around this concept of soundscape. Um, so yeah, for example, he... He, um, he tried to describe the soundscape uh, with and with three different main elements. Uh, so, for example, the keynote sounds that are the the most uh, you know um, present and uh, important sound that there is in a certain environment. So, for example, in a city, the keynote is uh, the um, the urban traffic. The, the sound of the traffic. Um, then there is the sound signals that are the foreground sounds that you can hear and that you can focus your attention on. So the keynote is more of a subtle sound that is uh, always present, but sometimes you, you, you are not conscious of it, like, for example, the traffic or the wind uh, or the birds chirping uh, in the morning or, or this kind of stuff. Uh, the sound signals are the foreground elements of this uh, soundscape. And then there is the sound mark, uh, which is the third uh, main uh, element of the soundscape that is uh, like... Um, the specific sound that describes that place and identifies it. Uh, like, for example, I don't know, in a... Uh, in, um, uh, let me think about an example. Uh, for example, in an industry or in a... Um, you know, the, the, the sound and the noise of the machines, for example. Uh, yeah. This kind of things. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like at, at my house here, there's a there's a foundry, like a metal factory, okay. you know, like a f two blocks away. And I, I grew up in this place, so I, I'm so used to it. And that, but that's I would almost say that that the sound of that place is is for here, since it's so constant, is in this neighborhood is like the key or part of the mm. key, at least, you know, because it's so like sometimes on uh Sundays, not every Sunday, because it's America, we work all the time, but like <laughs> on holidays and stuff, like it's really surreal, like because it's shut down, 
And okay. immediately when you go outside, the silence, the, the absence of it uh, is just, you know, it's loud. It's like, what's so weird? Oh, there's not that, just that drone, you know. The silence is loud. I love this. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. This contradiction. So I don't know. I guess, or maybe that's part of the, the mark in that set of that, that framework. Or maybe it's a little bit of both. I don't know. Yeah, well, actually, definitions are kind of, you know, we, you, you always have to take them with a pinch of salt because, uh, yeah. yeah, they describe uh, some, you know, a general picture of the thing. But, of course, uh, if you go deeper in the details, uh, it becomes uh, quite uh, useless in a certain way. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's useful for describing a general picture, of course, Uh uh, yeah. Uh, so you, you live near to uh, th this huge uh, industry plant of uh, metal. Uh, well, it, you are in yeah. Wisconsin, right? Yeah, it's actually yeah a little town in Wisconsin, but uh, it just so happens we have this one this metal foundry <laughs> in town. It's not an area where there are a lot of them actually, or it's just no. one there. Yeah, just one here. And okay. that's, that's part of why it's so uh, identifiable, you know, it's like okay. when, it's, when it's off, you know, when people aren't working, it's, um, you don't hear any, the own, any other industry, you know, it's basically like light traffic, you know, if at all, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, anyway, the soundscape is something that we are living in every day, every time of the day. Uh, silence that does not exist, uh, we know. <laughs> Since uh, John Cage, 4 minutes and 33 seconds. <laughs> silence is not a thing of this earth. <laughs> there is always some sounds. So, yeah, I think that uh, the, the, the focus on the soundscape is something that we really need to think about uh, when we think of our environment of the place where we live uh, because yeah mainly we put our focus on uh, you know on the visual side of our world basically the aesthetic of the houses or of the places uh, of the gardens of the wild etc 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 but something that I, I think it's uh, less considered is uh, the sonic soundscape that is uh, Super, super present and super important, but of course we are um, a society that works uh, mainly with the eyes. So <laughs> ears yeah. are always uh, in the in the background in a certain way. Subway yeah. system ventilation fans sound nuts in New York City. They went into the street like a giant didgeridoo. Well, that's super interesting. <laughs> you should sample it uh, I'm help I'm stuck in a loop uh, because yeah <laughs> yeah yeah I was just reading that yeah that that's that's it's interesting in the ur urban how that you know well I mean I think that's actually a big part of a lot of this downscape study progressed is thinking of sound especially in urban like environments because that's that's my main thing when I'm in the city like down in Chicago or back home in San Francisco or anywhere like that like is the sounds are just so different than what I'm used to you know? <laughs> like definitely love like just listening while I walk around in in the city because it's just even the traffic sounds like way different because it's the there's more of it and it's reverberating off of tall buildings you know it's like a totally different character than traffic even in my town you know yeah yeah i well I, in my opinion uh there there is no not really mm, bad soundscapes in this uh, regard because uh yeah maybe maybe you can say yeah but the traffic it's uh it's noisy it's loud but yeah it's part of your environment so yeah i think uh, yeah it has its uh, role in it uh, and uh, yeah maybe you you don't like it but it's not bad uh, in itself uh, actually it doesn't uh, yeah it doesn't have to be 
like if if you live in it you you have to live in it so i mean it, it's it's not so bad <laughs> like I, yeah i spent a lot of or not a lot but you know two or three years living in a bigger city here in, in madison and like there you had I, you had to get used to like the constancy of the traffic and and even like more often hearing the occasional like someone yelling or something and mm-hmm. I got used to it. <laughs> I got used to it enough even in those two years where I it was hard to get used to going back to a small town again. <laughs> yeah, there is this certain degree of uh, you know adaptation in the human uh, nature. Uh, also yeah. speaking of soundscape, uh, yeah. But one of the things that I found really interesting about the Schaffer uh, ideas about the soundscape is that you you must preserve them, uh, especially the yeah. the sound marks, uh, the the thing that make that soundscape exactly that soundscape, even if it's of course something that is uh, probably bad on in other on other fields, like for example, you know, a huge fabric with a lot of machines and a lot of pollution. But yeah, it's yeah. part of that world, and uh, of course, recording soundscape and preserving them, I think it's something really, in a certain way, revolutionary <laughs> in this sense, yeah. and something that I see that is spreading um, more and more during time, probably because there is more consciousness about this thing, uh, yeah. not only in the, you know, in the university of uh, or the research field, the musician field, but also on other levels, like, for example, you know, architecture, for example. Uh, they have, I think, uh, and city planning, they have, I, I think they have an eye on the on the sound result of the buildings uh, and on the acoustic of a city, for example. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Because yeah. uh, it, it's going to come into play because then that's going to be like the like the like you're saying like the mark of that place you know the way people know it <laughs> yeah the way people live it of course if you are an archi- yeah. an architect uh, you have to think about uh, all the levels of uh, of of, uh, of the experience of that place uh, yeah materials yeah, visual, uh, everything yeah yeah exactly uh, um well, there is uh, these things of the field recordings and of the ar- archiving uh, soundscape that um, uh, I think it's something really interesting um, and something that needs to be spread a little bit more. We are used to, you know, libraries, books, archives, uh, and, um, and visual archives we have, like, uh, you know, our world, as I said, yeah. is based on on the eyes, uh, on the sense of the of the view. Uh, but yeah, Schaffer, for example, in the sixties and in the seventies, uh, started this uh, world soundscape project. So it's like a project started in the university of. Uh, let me check the the name. I don't remember it. Um, Simon Fraser University. Okay. Uh, in British Columbia in Canada uh, and yeah this project is something really interesting because of course he he, he went uh, with um, his collaborators uh, uh, around the world to record and also to film and take picture of uh, many different places to archive all the sounds and create uh, of course a sound, a sound archive a soundscape archive um, I know that you are a lot into field recordings. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, actually, yeah, because um, a lot of the people that I I've probably have spoken with <laughs> people working on those projects before and just not known it. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> with my work at a place called Sound Devices, where we make professional field recorders, so like the kind of things that they use for projects like that, and I know a lot of the people I talked to when I was doing support were doing this exact kind of work where it was recording um, the sound of a place. See, what I now know is a soundscape, you know, <laughs> but back then, <laughs> yeah, that's how they would des- describe it to me as like, 
this hyper focus on just what that place is in terms of sound like you know it's sound identity you know and it could be cities um some of them were cities or natural areas some of them were really into just the natural areas you know uh but that it was like yeah it's probably the same types of projects because they were working for like universities and stuff you know <laughs> yeah yeah and i saw, actually i saw last night i didn't get a chance to look way into it, but it looks like it's another one of those kind of projects called sound cities that's it's like soundcities.com that's like um doing similar where they're they're making an archive of uh all these different places all over the world and then i guess they're gonna have installations to try to like kind of recreate these soundscapes cool for people you know to, like yeah to like be in those places you know simulate being in those places using a sound a lot so that was really yeah cool. great i'm looking at the website now and it's super nice you have the map you can uh listen to different yeah. places in the city wow super nice didn't know about it really cool yeah me neither <laughs> <laughs> till just last night it looks really neat though i know a lot of things that that come up too or you know since there's different areas of this like of um soundscape interest or research or whatever and and i know that was remember some of the people i talked to were super uh hyper interested in just the natural part of it like the non-human you know they're always looking for like what they always called the most natural soundscape you know which i always thought was really interesting too because you can't i think that's part of why we perceive it as negative you know the whole sounds like when we're talking about the city because like you can't escape it really like there's nowhere <laughs> you can really go where you just don't hear any uh human related sound you know or there's true. very little places you can go true very true really yeah 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 um, super super interesting actually uh, I, I I always used to live uh, in uh, in countryside areas, uh, uh, basically all my life. So yeah, for example, for me the the sound of big cities uh, is something really um, alien to my world, uh, to my inner world, inner soundscape. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. It, it, sometimes it's really <laughs> a little bit scary, uh, at least maybe because I'm not used to it, of course. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's stressful at, at first, and I, I mean, I don't know, everyone has different theories about that, but I mean, you know, that to me, I, I think it's just always a, a stress. But in that, people just when they're getting used to it, is actually probably causing a continual stress, but. That's kind of that's that's kind of a hot take, but <laughs> yeah. I saw there's another um, thing, and when I'm reading about sounds like this Bernie Krauss fellow uh, who I don't know what he says he's always a musician and soundscape mm -hmm. ecologist, but it was getting that was in the, the the soundscape ecology area, and okay, he kind of had a way of splitting the the categories up in a in the way like we're talking about it's kind of similar to the way Schaefer did with the keynote and sound signals and sound mark but he mm -hmm. this Bernie Krauss guy he's he's split it into what he called all these words ending with phony like you know sound phony or whatever uh so geo geo phony <laughs> mm -hmm. like, yeah 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 the sounds like that the things that aren't animals make like so weather and tides and all that kind of you know wind and that kind of stuff and and, and rocks and things and then biophony <laughs> which is the sounds that all animals make that aren't humans and then anthropophony which is all sounds originating from humans and like that that splitting actually is more probably the way i think about it more when i hear mm. think of a soundscape it's like what do i hear here that's like you know, it's just really basic categories. It's like the it's kind of like the weather. There's what I would call nature, quote unquote, which is all non-human <laughs> sounds. Yeah. 
and then <laughs> then anything that's human. But then it's like, yeah, and then they're not all all bad, you know. Like it, it's just an interesting way to categorize it. Yeah, I think it's it's kind of useful as a sort of definition because you can basically recognize and put the elements in one category uh, or in the other. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And you can think about what if you're analyzing what, uh, any soundscape or whatever, you can think about what what you're listening for and and yeah, like what. It can help you kind of get a key on what kind of place it is, you know, mm. in the really basic sense. True, true. Yeah. Um, but now we are speaking about, uh, you know, definitions and the overall general idea of soundscape. Uh, but yes, of course, and uh, about of archives and uh, preservation and, uh, for example, digitalization of uh, old archives. Uh, uh, I'm thinking, I, I don't know if it's probably, but I'm, yeah, probably it's, you, you can think about them as a soundscapes archive. For example, the archives of interviews about people, like, uh, for example, oral history interviews. Uh, I think they are sort of a part of the anthropo anthropophony of a place, actually. It's like the... The memories and the and the, and basically the the voice of the human beings. Yeah. Uh, uh, and that's super interesting because it opens up a lot of uh, a lot of possibilities uh, and a lot of uh, you know interaction between different fields uh, of research, uh, like uh, human studies and uh, and uh, environment studies, for example. Uh, so soundscape is some is some sort of uh, of um, way to connect a lot of things uh, if we think about it in this way uh, yeah, yeah it's super nice but also soundscape is part of uh, something more uh, art related if we want to to use the word art uh, so for example you can use uh, field recordings in musical compositions uh, yeah. or like in uh, Paulino Olivero's uh, deep listening composition, the soundscape is a composition in itself because you are the right. listener who focuses attention on one detail, on the other one, on a faraway sound, on a closer one. Yeah, I think this is super interesting yeah. how you can use the soundscape in a musical composition. I know that you use a yeah. lot of field recordings uh, in your works. Yeah. Uh, how do you use them? Definitely, I I do mostly bringing like kind of like you first mentioned. Like I just have field recordings that because I, I like to just make them. So that's kind of a soundscape thing. Uh, well, it's totally is one, but I'm not. Well, I'm not <laughs> always when I field record. I'm not always thinking of it as a totality. Sometimes I am going out and being um so like uh prejudiced or whatever about like oh i i want that sound of you know mm -hmm. that thing i hear right there and i'm actually thinking in terms of like not listening to the soundscape <laughs> you know which is it's just another way you know it's no good or bad but but i also often will at usually in the same trips we'll just be like what does this whole place sound like and just record that too you know like uh so, and then i bring those into when i make music i just put them in there <laughs> pretty much i don't know if it's kind of <laughs> like a super simple way but I, I guess i'm bringing the the sound when it's a soundscape like a, a recording of an environment i'm just bringing the environment into um a composition and kind of and then i guess i'm sort of playing along with it be, in that sense because i'm thinking of sounds that go with it and that don't that that complement it in some way you know mm -hmm. but it's not quite as i don't think it's quite as in depth as yeah like uh the deep listening of oliveros because it's that's more about an interaction which i've done a little bit before too just in my life but i don't I haven't had as much experience or as many chances to do that and that's that's a little different i think 
Also, yeah, but well, <laughs> I think there are a lot of uh, different ways to approach soundscape as a composition tool. Uh, there is the active listening, like in Polino Rivero's uh, um, research, but there is also, I don't know, I think, for example, uh, at uh, the basic uh, <laughs> John Cage for minutes and 33 seconds, uh, that's uh, also yeah. uh, one way to use the soundscape uh, in a... In a, di in a completely different way in that case because there is the yeah. ironic uh, uh, purpose of uh, you know putting the audience in front of its of itself yeah. <laughs> and uh, and of its sounds <laughs> and also there is this relationship between the the performer that is not doing nothing and uh, the audience that is actively <laughs> creating yeah. the composition so yeah, there, I think there are many different ways of approaching it as a composition tool, and yeah, uh, I I I personally don't use that much soundscape in my compositions. Sometimes I use some field recordings, uh, and mainly with the with the goal to you know to evoke something like uh, to bring uh, to the listener something that is. Uh, it is um, unexpected because, of course, we are speaking of recorded music. So uh, when I think of listening to recorded music, I think at listening at uh, music in the in the classical sense of music, notes, keys, uh, harmonies, uh, and all this kind of stuff. I think that field recordings uh, for the for for the most part of the of the people who listens to music uh, is something that is. Uh, at the same time, familiar and uh, and alien, so it's uh, it's always interesting for me to put some uh, field recordings elements and some soundscape elements into a composition to, in a certain way, to take the listener somewhere else, uh, both in space and time, basically. Because uh, yeah, maybe I can use some recordings of uh, a specific place with a specific. Uh, Keynote, speaking about the Schaffer yeah. definition, or yeah. I can use something that is, uh, for example, connected to the quality of the recording, so it takes you on another time, uh, like for example, some lo-fi recordings of voices, of human voices. Um, so yeah, basically, when yeah. I use uh, sound, the soundscape in a composition is for, um, you know, to to take the attention of the listener somewhere else from where he or she is in that moment. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'd agree with. I mean, with as far as agree, it's, not, it's like that. That I would say I use it in a similar way. Like it, it's because I feel like it's always narrowing in some ways. Like if you have a, a field recording that's that is a recording of the soundscape of wherever you were. Like mm -hmm. to put it into a composition with then do things with it is like kind of a narrowing of that soundscape. So yeah. it's, it's kind of using it as another instrument, which which is, yeah, it, it's just one way to do things. I think like if I sometimes I feel like I, or I, I often feel like it would be a fun or, you know, useful <laughs> exercise to to like play in the soundscape but i know you can't do that with a field recording as well in my opinion because like like it's almost like i want to be inputting sound into the space at, mm. at, at the time i'm gonna you know what i mean to like actually play in in play the soundscape that's kind of more like the oliveros approach or you know with where she came up with that deep listening idea and that is is something I want to do more a lot of the time, but I just haven't had the chance to as much lately. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, actually, yeah, it's uh, it's super interesting. Uh, again, I think it's something that crossed the borders of um, of uh, of disciplines, uh, cross the borders of uh, art and. Uh, research uh, and uh, human yeah. studies and uh, 
For this reason, I think that soundscape is a really important thing to consider if you are uh, a contemporary musician or composer, uh, because it's really yeah. part uh, part of uh, of our world in a in a wider sense than just uh, music and art. Uh, um, so yeah, super 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 interesting. Uh, oh, of course, if there are any questions uh, and if in the chat you want to interact, uh, just write down. We will answer. We will uh, we will take a look at them. Of course, we are we are going like without you know. Just, it's it's a talk. It's a chat uh, between two two person. But there is also you <laughs> that are viewing this uh, stream. <laughs> And you can interact with us, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> so don't be scared. <laughs> don't be scared. Okay. Another, another super interesting and fascinating thing, for example, is the invisible soundscape for me. Uh, like, for example, the electromagnetic fields. <laughs> That's something oh, yeah. that we, we are not used to consider because it's not... Uh, we cannot listen to it with our ears. Uh, <laughs> we need to translate these uh, electromagnetic frequencies into audible range and sounds. But yeah, it's something that it's here. <laughs> it's here now that yeah. I'm talking with you from my screen, from my webcam, from my computer, from my speaker, from my mic, from the power uh, running into my house. So yeah, it's, uh, yeah. it's something really fascinating and yeah, something that we don't think too much about uh, usually. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of it's kind of a translation, I guess, really, because it's it's like um, similar to um, like infrared and for the visual. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I don't know if I, there I are. I want to get something like that. <laughs> oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, hello, Deep. Uh, hello, welcome. <laughs> yeah, I, I was thinking, yeah, it's a sort of... I don't, I don't know if there are any artists who works uh, on the visual world, uh, on the visual field, with infrareds or ultraviolet. Probably, yeah, there are. Oh, I'm yeah. not too much into sure. I don't know visual names, art. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's something that it's uh, that it's also part of that world. Uh, well, in the music world, I know, for example, there is this Italian proje project uh, that it's called uh, Impero della Luce, uh, the Empire of Light, uh, who works just with um, you know translation of electromagnetic field of uh, everyday life objects like uh, yeah. microwaves, uh, screens, uh, televisions. Uh, and uh, you know power uh, converters uh, all this kind of stuff uh, it's super interesting well maybe i can link it in the in the chat because yeah, yeah. Uh, i'm going to link everything yeah. we we are talking about so we can you know have a sort of uh, archive even uh, of uh, of the thing that we are talking about um pero del yeah that is cool name. Sounds, yeah, it sounds even cooler in Italian. <laughs> oh, here it is, the album. Nice. Go and check yeah, it out. It's gotten a little. It's gotten a little more popular. It seems like to me lately that with the, I don't remember the name of it, but somebody made a little, uh, transducer for for that. Uh, is it Soma? Is that why? why yeah, why yeah, the that? Soma. Um, see, yeah, it's a. I think it's a Russian company uh, that yeah. made this uh, little thing. Uh, everything sounds cooler in Italian. Well, it's <laughs> <laughs> pretty much true. <laughs> I don't. I, I don't. I don't really. Yeah, not for you. <laughs> <laughs> not for Just me, for actually. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah check, that, uh, that Soma thing has gotten pretty. It seems like that increased the popularity of the this invisible soundscape sort of interest because I saw more people kind of talking about it and including that in their listening or what or what they do making music and and just yeah including that in their thoughts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Basically, it's something that 
has become a little bit popular lately, actually. But it's, uh, for example, uh, one thing that I found, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm following my thread in my mind. And so what I find really interesting when you speak about this soundscape is that uh, you actually need to go out or go in, but of course you need to travel uh, to, to discover them. Uh, yeah. So, for example, you have to go around the city with this transducer to catch them and to record them. Uh, yeah. Or, of course, if you are doing sound walks, for example, which is something really interesting. If you haven't uh, done it yet, people in the chat, uh, just try one time to do it because it's super nice. Do it. You take with you yeah. one recorder that can be even your phone if you want a pair of headphones and you go around following the sounds and recording them. That's something super cool to do. Uh, yeah. Strongly suggested. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's basically, it's what I call a walk. No, a walk. <laughs> that's a, it's that's so your type of walk, the right? only type of walk yeah. you do. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Unless I've got somewhere to go. <laughs> Going out for the groceries with the recorder. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't I didn't get any groceries, but I got some cool <laughs> <field> recordings. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's sounds it's good of the, to, yeah, to listen. Yeah, just recording your work, exactly. Uh, but it's not only recording your work, it's also an exercise of deep listening uh, at the same yeah, time. Yeah, I was going to say, actually, sometimes um, actually not recording is sometimes, like, interesting, too. Like, yeah. it, it, as blasphemous as that <laughs> sounds to audio geeks like, like me and stuff. But, like, I've done that before, too, like, either with, like, a mic and headphones or just with nothing, you know? Because it is inter I think sometimes you almost listen closer when you have that thought of like, I'm not recording. Like, <laughs> I, what do you want to know about what you're listening to? You have to just try to retain it by by listening. You know, so true. That can be interesting too. <laughs> yeah, very. But still, very you true. should always record. <laughs> It's hard. I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Always record. <laughs> yeah. You don't um, know when it will right be useful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Try it. Uh, I know that you have a field recorder deep. Try it. <laughs> yeah, it's, Go really, out it's with... really even good for... It's meditative, you know. True. Yeah, it's a sort of meditation for sure. But it's a sort of, uh, well, meditation is always an active thing that seems passive, but it's an active thing. And yeah, this yeah. is completely related to it. Uh, as the sound works uh, are super connected to that. Mm. Yeah. True. Yeah, true, I mean, true. any meditation really will will include that because it's, it gets, it's uh, back to like kind of what cage was doing with 433 and everything like there is no there is no silence so <laughs> if you're trying to relax in any way your the soundscape is eventually pretty quickly actually going to become very apparent you know yeah <laughs> and you have to find ways to kind of deal with that mentally whether you know or not let it be a distraction and <laughs> kind of be with it you know true True, true. Yeah, well, basically we are used to listen to, to recognize a soundscape just when there is loudness, basically. <laughs> I yeah. think so. Yeah, definitely. When, when you put a little bit of more attention to it, you can discover all the different levels of uh, of the loudness of silence, as you said at the beginning. <laughs> yeah, and I think it helps you. Uh, live <laughs> exist <laughs> whatever because like to get to know the soundscapes because you do kind of go through the ones where you spend more time like if it's at your work or your home or all the wherever you spend time like if you don't really you find if you don't really know them it's i don't know i just i don't know how to say it but it seems like it's easier to relax in those places if you just know this the soundscape because you do kind yeah. of ignore a lot of the sounds, you know, if you don't think about it. Yeah, you're for, you're for sure a, a little bit more conscious about the space where you live. And uh, 
yeah, you probably you can you can feel a little bit more uh, comfortable because you know it. Yeah, <laughs> I feel are... that way at least. Yeah. When I first moved to the city, I could hear the train and cars and traffic, and I literally was so overwhelmed at first. Yeah, we were talking yeah. about it before you joined the, the stream, Deep. Um, yeah, as I said, I'm I'm from the countryside, so when I'm in big cities with a lot of traffic and a lot of people, uh, yeah, it's, it's so energy-consuming to have all this uh, very busy soundscape... Uh, yeah, it's uh, really yeah. hard at the beginning. Then, of course, you get used to it. But <laughs> yeah, it's interesting because it's the. I mean, it's getting more into the psychology of it, but it's just the way that the the sound triggers um, a mood or thoughts in your brain. Like it's almost like a sound. If if it's sound that if you hear sounds that aren't what you expect in your soundscape. It causes this tension because you're thinking like what does that mean which sh should i do something or whatever so you know that's so, so i remember like when i moved to the city i think us me you and dipper all kind of the same we come <laughs> from more rural areas and have been in cities before and like when i first moved to the city uh it was like i'd hear a car go by and every time that i realized that part of me was like oh who's here what what is that what, what are they why who's mm -hmm. in who's in my you know and it, then I, I get used to it nearby it's like okay that's just this place no one's here or whatever you know <laughs> but that's True. that all that can contribute it can go the other way too like if if you're used to a big city you know and yeah so well something that i i re i really maybe it's weird to say it but something that i really liked about uh, the the beginning of the lockdown in Italy uh, last year was that uh, of course I live uh, in the countryside uh, so there is not too much traffic uh, even in a normal situation but yeah in that specific moment there were no traffic at all so for I, I think for the first time in my life I I haven't heard the sound of the traffic, even in the in the very very background. But there were no sound. And in the morning, I recorded the, the sounds of the bird waking up, without the yeah. background sound of the traffic. And that was really something. <laughs> I think uh, yeah. w w maybe the only I don't know if the, the only thing that I really liked about that moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm always craving that when I. Uh, that's it to me because and it's I, I have this I I try not to think of it as like, a human sounds bad but like, <laughs> I do be, because I, it's not that it's not like a misanthropy really isn't but it's just more like I always hear those sounds you know, mm. like when I've gone places and I could record and people that are with me like you know my wife or my dad or whoever was like, oh you could record here and it's like yeah I'll just get the sounds of people talking. Like I've got hours of that. Like I really need to. I want to record like things that don't include people talking, even in the distance. You know, which is like actually really hard. You know, because <laughs> you have to be kind of reclusive. Yeah, there are some sort of anthropo anthropophonic uh, situations that are really everywhere pervasive. <laughs> yeah, they are everywhere. Yeah, uh, like uh... jets and airplanes. Like it's cool, but. <laughs> it gets old when I'm trying to record other stuff. Uh, it's what crazy because is, is interesting. Yeah, yeah it's, it's like crazy really because neat. then that the tension can lead to what some people consider scary sounds, especially if you aren't used to it, which I feel artists use to their advantage. That's true. That's very true. Yeah, it's what you expect is so much of a part of the psychology of. Well, all psychology, <laughs> the psychology of fear, for sure. Yeah. And the soundscape is a big part of, because it's the whole environment. So where you are the most of the time, that becomes what you expect. And yeah, you could definitely put, putting unexpected elements into the soundscape is, would definitely be a good way to cause tension. True. And it would be difficult too, because it's not just saying like, 
like if you think of a composition with sound and just adding a sound they don't expect that's putting an unexpected sound that's causing tension in music but so actually like present a soundscape to a listener and then add a sound into it that they psychologically perceive as coming from that soundscape that, mm -hmm. that, that's difficult and it's kind of interesting <laughs> Yeah, and uh, again, we see that uh, soundscape is something that crossed the border of disciplines, <laughs> of, yeah. uh, of different fields. Uh, it it goes into psychology and <laughs> yeah. and art and uh, and yeah, and film. Because I'm thinking there with that, that's really a film kind of thing, you know. Yeah, they're definitely creating soundscapes to, you know, because they're often recording location sound for things but for if it's a show or a movie or whatever but they're actually not using it as much as people probably think you know a lot of times it's part of the environment they're constructing that soundscape from recordings of that environment when at different times when they weren't shooting you know because of other noises they're making or it just sounded better on some other day or there was jets <laughs> <You know? laughs> but then they also do that thing where they insert you know, they might want a distant scream or something or something that, you know, where they're really actually composing a soundscape. And yeah, well, I, I just watch, thought of that, uh, how that's. Yeah, I think that uh, in if we are talking about the film industry, probably the 90 percent or the 95 percent of the sound that we hear are just post-production sounds and sound design elements, basically. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah, it's something that it's really important. There are, I, I, I was reading something yesterday, I think, about that there are two Oscars. Uh, one is for the sound design, so how it's uh, put in the space, etc., uh, etc., et and one is for the sound composition, basically. So how you yeah. cre create the sound environment. So there are teams of artists that works on that thing. And it's one of the most important. I think it's the sixty percent of the of the power of a film situation of a of a scene is made by the sound, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's funny for how much work goes into the visual part of it. Yeah, it's it's more than half. Of it. It's probably the sound as far as the perceived quality of it. Yeah, yeah. If you and it's if, always if, a soundscape. Yeah, when you're exactly doing sound for film. Exactly. It's always it recreating a soundscape uh, with a certain goal, a certain purpose to communicate a certain feeling for that scene or to amplify yeah. a certain... Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, we yeah. had to do Even... that in school. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, D Deep Wit is, uh, <laughs> is fr fr as, as a view from the inside, actually. <laughs> so it's super yeah. nice. Film sound design is absolutely brilliant. The room and set resonators and reverbs and so cool. I wish I could use them on my own ambient music. Complete reverb rigs and such. Yeah. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, because it gets into the like specific reverb, you know. I know mm. one practice they'll do uh, for location sound for film and television. <laughs> I keep splitting them. I'm so in my mode. Film and television. <laughs> uh, whatever. <laughs> But like, you know, the record they call room tone, where they just like, like even inside in a room that feels, seems quiet, like for an interview, mm. the sound, the sound mixer will have everyone shut up and they'll record like a few minutes of just the sound of that silent room because they use that like for mixing to construct the soundscape later on and it makes it feel more natural. Yeah. Uh, that's that's something really really interesting, uh, and again we are crossing lines from cinema to <laughs> to university research and <laughs> to yeah. to music composition from composer like John Cage. Uh, <laughs> that's <Yeah>. something <laughs> really really cool. Yeah, it's funny how I, I work with it. So I hear you know hear about it so much at work because it's so what they do and I didn't even <laughs> think about it when I was like reading about stuff last night how that obviously the whole yeah field is well, has a lot to do with soundscape. Hmm. 
<sighs> okay, okay. Hmm. <laughs> so, so, so. Well, let me check. I had a couple of other things that I wanted to talk about. I had a, a little list. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, uh, one thing that I, I think uh, it's uh, it's a little bit tricky when you think about soundscape is that uh, you think about soundscape as some like uh, sort of a w wide open space, you know, but uh, something that it's really common is that we have like a indoor and a home environment. So there is a place where we live and even in that little space uh, there is a soundscape and we are not uh, used to to put our attention on it because yeah it's familiar and it's our comfort zone but yeah it's made of sound. <laughs> yeah. Of sounds. Yeah, if there is something missing, a little thing missing from it, sometimes you notice, or a little thing added, you know, you're mm. probably more hypersensitive to that. Yeah, like like the sound, I know here, like the sound of my, the boiler starting to run, and, and <laughs> uh, like the refrigerator, like a lot of machines, you know, and, and yeah, cat running around or something. <laughs> They're all cats everywhere. Part. Like, yeah. You have <laughs> also know, dogs, like, you know, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that sounds sounds different. <laughs> 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 but like, uh, it's a little dog. Uh, <laughs> but those sounds are yeah, like even knowing like little things that I don't think of. Like I know when I hear a cat running, like probably which cat it is and where it's going and stuff, all based on the sound. For example, I can recognize the people that uh, I know since a long time. For example, my parents or my friends from the um, the rhythm of their steps when they walk. Yeah, <laughs> that's something that yeah. uh, I basically do every time that I hear something approaching. Is that uh, I can recognize him if I know that specific step rhythm and uh, if they. Yeah. You know, if they move a little bit the foot on the on the floor and they make a little more sound, or if they are silent, or the, if they have small steps or longer steps. Uh, <laughs> yeah. My apartment yeah, creaks. Yeah, that's all part of it. <laughs> Chat girl. And the, uh, one floor board upstairs. I almost miss it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, that's nice. like those little marks, you know, like that's. Like when they change something or you change something and the sound, a new sound develops or old sound goes away, like you can get uncomfortable because you don't notice it for a while, you know, mm -hmm. it's just, see, I'm, I'm always back to me, it's the psychology of it. So it's so interesting, <laughs> like, because it's, I don't know, it just is like that little things like that, though, like, I know, like I mentioned my boiler and like. You know, in the last, sometime last year, I remember it like started to just make a kind of different sound when it <laughs> started up. And, but it was so subtle that it's like, I had this like, when I realized that, it, that I realized I was feeling some kind of anxiety from it, not like crazy, but like there was a tension there. Cause like hmm. when I realized, oh, that sound that I'm hearing is part of because the boiler sounds different. Like I felt like, oh, relieved, you know, <laughs> it's weird how that becomes. I guess the psychology of it's interesting to me because that just shows how much of it's like literally your environment, you know? Yeah. And it's super effective uh, if we talk about what our mood and uh, our way of living in a, in a specific yeah. place, for example, it, this is some, one soundscape that I really hate. For example, is uh, in the big malls, when there are yeah. where there are like uh, I know like a lot of uh, shops, and everyone has its own speakers with its own music, and then there are all the people speaking at the same time, and that's really something that makes me uncomfortable because it's. Uh, totally out of uh, every human scale <laughs> for me. <laughs> yeah. 
Definitely. Yeah, I, feel I, the same. I cannot like yeah. enter uh, a mall without feeling uncomfortable. <laughs> actually. Yeah, it's yeah, it's to the point where you feel that way almost preemptively. And yeah. Like I've always likened that. Like yeah, that I know that that um the cacophony of sound. Sometimes I don't mind it. Like if I can, if I'm able to, um, which is this is really rare. It's usually just in an airport. <laughs> like if I'm able to fall asleep. Like I can kind of like take a nap in that sort of cacophony of sound of, of voices that aren't, you know, screaming just, but there's a lot. So they're loud, but yeah, usually it makes me tired. Like I always feel like it's like equated to like, if you've ever driven a, a ridden in a car with a, the top goes down, you know, so your hair's mm -hmm. in the wind and stuff. There's something about that, that you actually feel tired when you've driven for a while, like more, more so than if there wasn't a, or if there was a top that's why i feel like with that like a mall or something I, like being subjected to that cacophony of voices makes me tired yeah yeah I, and of course we i think uh, i'm speaking for myself but also i think for, for also for you we are used to certain types of cacophony for example nice music yeah, <laughs> yeah. but uh, yeah, yeah it's definitely. a completely different thing uh really a completely different thing because yeah noise music basically it's uh a sonic assault created uh with a certain purpose by a certain artist uh, so yeah it's something more at least for me it's something more precise in a certain way more uh clear in my mind uh, something that has yeah. uh more clearness uh, and uh, yeah that's something oh hello Grumo I saw that Grumo started following the channel also Eviak hello hello oh, Eviak is that. one of the two members of L'Impero della Luce just to say <laughs> oh cool <laughs> yeah yeah <Hi>. nice <laughs> um, so yeah um, I was yeah, sorry. I was speaking about nice music. Yeah, for me, it's more clear, and in a certain way, it's more comfortable <laughs> uh, than uh, you know this very full and busy human environment, uh, anthropocentric yeah. environment, based on the yeah. sales, also because based on selling things. Uh, that's make me a little yeah. bit unco more uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, there might even be like yeah another layer of psychology to that because yeah, I feel the same. Like because the soundscape is so specific, like there's certain like there's a kind of a traditional at least here in America probably there too. There's like a certain way that a mall is kind of laid out where there's some familiarity between different malls, like whether it's the sounds from different stores or if there's food and the way they're built and all that where it's like there's probably a detail enough in it where your brain can be like not only is this the sound of a bunch of people around me in a big building but it's like i feel like this is a mall you know <laughs> like it is, yeah your brain can get that but that's the soundscape thing is your brain can actually identify that so a lot of the time and i think <laughs> so that's where that other layer of psychology like if you have some um misgivings about the concept of a mall because of capitalism or whatever like <laughs> it can actually come you know that's where the soundscape can bring you to like really be like oh this place you know true well, probably to exercise my 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 uncomfortable feelings when i enter a mall i should do a sound walk into a mall and uh, and yeah. record something yeah no it would be interesting to, to take the sound like soundscapes that you find uncomfortable and like yeah go listen closer and maybe even re maybe record them <laughs> like so you could listen later and like just yeah analyze that and play experiment and see if like what what could be done to make it more comfortable or, or whatever i don't know yeah <laughs> do a lot of neat stuff there yeah probably it's also because doing a sound walk recording and listening in a more focused way probably it makes you more conscious about that space and sorry there is the, the cat passing in front of the camera yay. Yay. i saw the cat later 
<laughs> um, yeah, Dip said there's a whole um, there's a whole genre called mall wave, and that you know so and that's that's a good thing. Like, yeah, it's totally me and Andrea expressing this kind of discomfort with it is just that's a totally subjective thing, you know. Like, Absolutely, not not bad at all. Like, if somebody could maybe feel like pretty comforted or make find that really interesting. Yeah, as I said in the beginning, there is no no judgment on the soundscape. It's just a personal feeling, a personal perception, and personal relationship with that space, with that sound space. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, as uh, Schaffer said, uh, it's important to preserve all the different uh, soundscape. So, you know, even a big industry with a lot of machines, very noisy machines, has its own value as a soundscape, even if it's uh, yeah. difficult to, to relate to and to feel something good about it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hello, Elia. Yeah, it's hello. a fact. Uh, I didn't mean to interrupt. Yeah, it's a fact about like a place, you know? Yeah, it's exactly. Important. <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah. <laughs> Empty malls, uh, however, are cool, like empty amusement parks, true? <laughs> true, and there is a lot of reverb in empty malls. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. I never heard of mall wave, so I'll have to look that up. <laughs> me neither. Well, uh, I listen to the music that, that, that they put out from the speakers uh, during uh, the my... my stuff when I buy something at the mall but yeah never put too much attention on that uh, well yeah. this is another topic uh, about soundscape for me if we think about Brian Eno and music for airports uh, so there is a music that is uh, specifically conceived to create a certain soundscape yeah. so it's not just the soundscape that uh, is uh, you know is recorded and uh, then used in a musical composition but there are musical compositions that are created specifically for created a certain soundscape and yeah that's also the other side of the of the question of the topic uh, uh, about uh, art and soundscape and music and soundscape uh, yeah 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 definitely uh, I, that that's something I haven't I mean I Brian Eno, I listen to it all. Yeah, I thought about, but I, that's something I haven't messed with, like in the creative side of things. Thinking of that, like I always just make some uh, sound I want to hear. You know, <laughs> that's for mm. nothing besides I want to hear that, or, or I think someone might like it. You know, that would be. Well, on a on a certain level, we are all a kind of. Um... Brian Eno's. <laughs> I know it's a it's a weird metaphor, but for example, when we are at home and we put some music in the background, we are creating a yeah. certain soundscape for our home environment. So we yeah. are specifically and actively choosing a soundscape for our situation. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's a good point. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, and sometimes people, I guess, yeah, even do that where they don't. It's funny how they think of it as like is some is it or is it not music or whatever like <laughs> for when we when people are deciding to play something or make a sound because like we do like I have a thing where I need to I need to have hear like a fan when I'm sleeping that's kind of like a thing too I'm just making the sound I'm creating a soundscape that I need for rest you know. <laughs> Andrea told me I'm Brianino. <laughs> Just relax. He said I was too deep. <laughs> and also Grumo. Brian Eno. <laughs> uh, Brian Eno. <laughs> the small Brian. Because, uh, yeah, in Italian, Eno is the That's part of the word small. that needs. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, I agree with Grumo. You can do anything, though. <laughs> yeah. You can really do sure. anything. <laughs> um well, but an interesting point is that we are speaking sometimes about music disconnected from the soundscape. But actually, music yeah. is is the soundscape. <laughs> is uh, yeah. is composed to be 
part of the soundscape, even in yeah. a concert. Definitely with live music. I wonder, would you think of it though, if uh, if something was intended to, or when somebody decides to listen to it on headphones, would that would that be like? Is that the soundscape? I don't know, because it's almost like the, you're purposely trying to isolate. You know, like out, you're almost trying to isolate the soundscape around you. That's a yeah. That's a good uh, question. Is that a soundscape? And one of the uh, another question. Well, we should we 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 will go back to it. Uh, another question that I'm thinking about in these days is: uh, Are virtual uh, ha virtual spaces like the internet, for example, do they have a soundscape? Hmm. hmm. I don't have an answer guess, for this question. Yeah. <laughs> I feel but, like. I mean, my knee-jerk reaction is no, but <laughs> I don't know. That, that I hadn't thought of it really much before. Because, of course, physical places and physical spaces are... They have their soundscape. But virtual spaces... For example, vir video games has their own soundscape. Yeah. Films there there have their own soundscape. Yeah, there are soundscapes in in the in the machine, <laughs> kind of like I guess in terms of it's all through the mediation, I guess, of of audio recording. Mm, true. And it, so, in that sense, then yeah, I would say yes. True. Yeah, because of course you you have sounds when you are traveling into the world wide web <laughs> yeah uh, yeah whatever sounds like if you're watching a video or uh, whatever and if there's and some project you know <laughs> where they're trying to yeah and different different platforms have have different soundscape in this sense because for example i don't know i'm thinking about uh, social medias because yeah they are everywhere in the virtual reality uh so for example i don't know Instagram as a soundscape that is uh, very broken and cut, or TikTok yeah. even even more cut, <laughs> like yeah, 10, suppose... 15 seconds of. Uh... Yeah, yeah, right. I so so I suppose if you uh, split it into if you consider an environment, quote unquote, um, like a a play like TikTok as an environment and etc. Yeah. And there is kind of a, or even your own computer like you know a lot of people use windows as an operating system and there are default sounds you know True. like the little when when you unplug something like that that becomes part of the little the virtual environment sonically i guess because yeah like you hear that sound and you have some sort of reaction of like like when i or the discord you know, everybody knows that. <laughs> like, we we have a reaction to that. You know, so yeah, I guess yeah, there is there is sort of a soundscape in in, virtual in the virtual reality. reality. Yeah, true. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, let me check the chat. Yeah, with speakers you have bass in your gut and chest, while with headphones you have the immersive pen in two different worlds. That's why a soundscape field recording can be so different depending on how you set up the stereo mics or whatever. Yeah, true. Yeah, Super yeah, it's true. huge. Like, yeah, that, I mean, I know in the the uh, Facebook groups that I that I have to be part of the, for my work. So, like, because some of our customers, a lot of them talk there, but they have a lot of interesting conversations too. Like, that's a big one. They're they're always geeking out about exactly how to place you know microphones for a stereo image or now with the um the the um 360 stuff there mm -hmm. also that's really huge and uh it's such a big difference like you know if it's like widely spaced omni mics or xy cardioids or or tf or <laughs> all these like you know things for binaural where they're literally have like a mannequin of a head with like ear yeah. shapes to like you know get that acoustic filtration that just feels like an ear you know so it, it really and it can make a difference like you, you can hear i wish i had some examples but i know i don't but i've had stuff where they've gone between those different methods in the same soundscape and it's, it's dramatic yeah the difference really 
Yeah, and also as uh, as Grumo said, there is this uh, huge difference between the the type of listening that you have uh, of a soundscape. So if it's a recorded soundscape, obviously you have like uh, speakers that are resonating yeah. through the air and uh, resonating through your body and the room in which you are. And uh, yeah, and then there are headphones that are super common nowadays and everyone has a pair of headphones for their phones uh, and, and they are part of yeah. uh, how you perceive the soundscape uh, uh, well the question if uh, the the headphones listening is uh is something connected to the soundscape is super interesting because yeah as you said uh, you are you, you use them to isolate yourself basically from the external environment um yeah. but uh well you are basically seeking and choosing your own sound environment when you are using headphones yeah yeah it's, you're trying to purposely leave your current physical sound environment and purposely like um I get not subject yourself to that. That sounds negative, but that's what sort of subject yourself to whatever sound environment uh, you want or someone wants to present to you. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Yeah, that, that's why the the model of recording with the binaural with the, the ears uh, mannequin thing is interesting because they're since that recording is going to go directly into your ears. And without the the effects of your ears doing that acoustic, you know, shaping, mm -hmm. that's that's why a lot of people like that because they think it's with headphones that recording would be the that method would be the most accurate, you know, to like human hearing or whatever. So it's interesting. Yeah, they, I think they use also like different type of uh, material for the head, like to make it uh, more similar to the. To the meat, <laughs> the flesh, to, yeah, yeah. To the flesh, they, they do, to yeah. The... yeah, yeah, yeah. I won't forget midside. Nobody can forget midside, Grumo. <laughs> In early two thousand, you could hear the MSN messenger ping sound coming out of people's windows. It was like birds in a tree, <laughs> part of the urban soundscape. I remember <laughs> that sound. I'm old enough. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> Broccoli emoji, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Crazy face stuff with mics. Yeah, it's super easy for bass and kick to cancel out and do weird stuff. Yeah, recording uh, is a... Um, it's a whole world of uh, crazy stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it definitely um, comes into play when you're trying to, obviously, <laughs> capture soundscapes. Yeah. A huge factor. <laughs> um, let me check if I have other things written down. Um, mm. <laughs> well, 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 um... Mm, so, what do you think about the... the... the role of the archives? about the, the places where you can store sounds for the future uh, generations. <laughs> because I think there are a lot of, uh, there are a lot of uh, possibilities in there, uh, outside from the art world and of the functional, uh, um, functional purpose of uh, field recordings, etc., etc. Um, should we yeah, archive know. every sound in the world to preserve <laughs> it from when it when the situation and that environment disappears? I don't think <laughs> that's it a hurts. good question. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it hurts, but I mean, it also I don't know. It, it, there's no no sound will ever happen again, like 
exactly you know so true i don't think it i think it's i don't think it hurts but i don't i don't think it's as maybe as critical as some people other people might feel like because like you know like even if you make the same sound twice in the same space right away there's two different sounds and mm. no matter what a soundscape in the same space is going to change which i guess is an argument for yeah like preserving it i think it's useful information <laughs> <laughs> but i don't know if it's yeah. yeah i don't think it's like critical it's not like you've lost something if you didn't record you know archive every last little space or whatever <laughs> yeah true 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 well uh, i think for example of course uh, something specific like uh, for example the 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 specific singing of a type of bird <laughs> i don't know yeah. something the the maybe that uh, birds uh, will be extinct in like uh, 50 mm. years and then yeah you have something that uh, remind but i think it's the same question as uh, like is it uh, worth to take pictures of everything is it work to uh, is yeah. it worth uh, to you know to record every single uh, situation with a camera so yeah that's probably the same question uh, and the same relationship between yeah. us human and uh, memory and uh, you know the connection yeah. with the past when you put it that way <laughs> when you mentioned something yeah like a like a bird or something that is, would go extinct yeah that that's a good point <laughs> Because I was thinking mostly in terms of soundscapes of like recording the soundscape of a place and thinking of how a place changes so much, whatever. But like, yeah, specific elements of soundscape of the soundscape like that. That's yeah, where it is worth worth it to record everything. Because some things it might be really useful to hear <laughs> later on. <laughs> Yeah, because I would true. be, I would be sad if, yeah. Well, I it does sad, you know. It's it's a kind of a sad feeling when you read about something. I mean, at the animals are a good example of like that animal's extinct, and you're like, oh, I wonder what it sounded like. Or if you're reading, it and there's no picture. It's like I wonder what that looked like, you know, like, and that would be feel dumb to just be like, well, we should have recorded it. <laughs> we didn't. <laughs> yeah. So, as we said, record everything. <laughs> yeah, just record everything, just to be safe. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't We will, u we will use uh, Google servers to store all the recordings. <laughs> yeah, worry about storage space later. <laughs> well, uh, the, the Internet archives for me are something really interesting in thinking about this thing. When... Uh, all the people can contribute to, you know, to add something, to add a little piece of uh, sonic environment and make it uh, available for everyone. I think that's uh, really something uh, useful to do. And uh, yeah, yeah, I see that there are a lot of them and there are even more in this year that are popping up here and there of the sounds archives. And yeah, that's uh, something really valuable for me. Yeah. Yeah, and that's a phenomena, I guess, of that. Like I was just saying, how it's basically free now. Like storage of data mm -hmm. has gotten so ubiquitous and, and cheap. That it, and that's a, that's cool. Like that's a really good thing. We have all these records, and to the point where you can make something that's more useful than just a lot of uh, like a big pile of audio. You know, because mm -hmm. you can have so much that like that that city. Uh, that project that I already forgot the name of Sound Cities, that thing, like where they're kind of doing like actually archiving the 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 soundscapes of cities specifically, you know, over time for like a particular so that's something you could like mine, you know, and mm -hmm. actually do research from really. Yeah. <laughs> There's patented sound like Porsche or Harley Davidson engines. Grumo right in the chat. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh yeah, that's true. <laughs> I'm or the do messenger field recordings here in Wisconsin and get a copyright strike on YouTube, so Harley <laughs> drives by. 
<laughs> That's uh, really crazy for me, at least, that you you can patent a sound like like that. It's yes. totally out of this of my world. <laughs> yeah, I don't understand yeah. it. Uh, it's capitalism. Yeah, just, uh, <laughs> yeah, right. That's so weird. I mean, it's it's not the same as a sound, but I mean, it, it kind of ties into the sounds, how sounds in the soundscape can affect things and the experience of really modern experience with like the copyright thing of music, like where people on here on Twitch or on YouTube will have, you know, things will get flagged or, or whatever because there's incidentally something playing in their sounds environment you know mm -hmm. like they weren't intentionally playing a britney spears song or whatever but <laughs> someone just drove by and it was playing in their car or something and like it's like literally your 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 soundscape that you're in can cause problems for you that you don't even expect <laughs> yeah that's uh yeah, it is kind of lame <laughs> I agree deep with uh, that's true. <laughs> it's really more it's really more of a of a of a political kind of problem than a soundscape problem, yeah. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> yeah, but again, we are crossing borders just starting from mm -hmm. this topic. Uh, it connects everything, <laughs> even politics. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, it's just that's how they're influencing the soundscape in a way you know or making mm -hmm. us think of the soundscape differently with things like that true true yeah well, you can decide the, the the soundscape of a city with a political decision about you know placing like a big road on that uh, area of the city so yeah, yeah. there are yeah, consequences yeah, and like the or where to put a stadium or airports and and all those things, factories and yeah. True. Everyone, everyone doesn't like it. <laughs> Except for, yeah, I won't. I won't get too into the politics of it. <laughs> no, 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 yeah, there's definitely a relation. Yeah. Totally, totally, totally. Uh, Grumo, do, uh, have you ever done a, a sound walk? Uh, if you are still here, I don't know. And uh, let me check. He probably doesn't know what it is. No, just kidding. He doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> it says the name says what it is. <laughs> well, I know that Heviak has done for sure some sound books. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, well, well. Hmm, we have like a half an hour left. Uh, hmm. Stadiums can be pretty loud. Um, I've never been to the yeah. stadium actually, seeing a sport events. Uh, I'm not a fan of sports actually. <laughs> yeah, they can be very loud. He doesn't think but so. Grumo, go for a sound walk. Yeah, exactly. Go for a sound walk. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, what's a sound walk? Well, for Grumo, just to, to describe it, uh, it's when you go outside and follow your ears. <laughs> you walk around and you follow the sounds, you focus on one sound that is far away and then try to follow it, or you just uh, focus your attention on the little sound close to you. Um, so yeah, uh, and you can record everything yeah. if you want, but yeah, uh, yeah do it, do it. <laughs> yeah, you should. Do it. You probably should. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, even yeah, the the stadium sounds. I, when I was again, when I was in college age, living in Madison, the main capital city here, like uh, there's a big college sports obviously it's a big college town and like the the uh football stadium was right downtown and that was just nuts like you could you could hear the people yelling and screaming and stomping from like a mile away which is pretty interesting i mean it wasn't loud a mile away but it was just like it's pretty phenomenal that you could like he was like wow what is that oh it's, it's people <laughs> like all yelling at the same time and like stomping <laughs> 
It's interesting. Yeah, sounds uh, sound walk are super nice uh, to do. Uh, it's a meditative and at the same time super active exercise, and also yeah, you 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 can really stay in touch with your environment. Uh, yes. Yeah. Strongly suggested. Um, I think it's the same as active listening. I mean, it is active listening, but it's it's active, you know, so it has the same benefits of active listening that you get with actively listening to music, where it helps you listen to every other kinds of music, too. So when you go on to sound walk and you're active listening to any environment, like, it, you more you're more prone to listen better everywhere you go. True. Which is useful. Abiak says, uh, something about extinction of sounds, neon lights are going out of production. Soon we won't have neon bulbs no more. It's a shame, I love their buzzing. <laughs> <laughs> you like that, huh? <laughs> but no, the, I, I know what you mean, though. Yeah, they do have a really distinct way of being like the... Um, I forget what it's called. The thing that actually powers them that makes the buzz. It's like a really unique way with the neon lights. I'm thinking like the ones that hang in the store windows and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, they are part of uh, of certain soundscape and yeah. <laughs> Also, I don't know if it's something, well, it's something really weird uh, for me, for example, that also there are these um, electric uh, cars that has no sound of engines. <laughs> yeah. That's also something that is changing in the human soundscape. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I've definitely encountered that. Here, they're getting even popular, the Teslas or whatever, and... Uh, even like in rural here like and uh look at that that uncanny feeling of like this car going by really fast and i didn't hear anything but its wheels on the road it's mm. weird. yeah totally <laughs> it makes me imagine feel like a little bit uncomfortable <laughs> i have less yeah, control like imagine... on yeah and then if you think of like the soundscape if they were all that way it'd really change it just be like yeah. tires on the road. Squeaky yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Ma imagine I guess a in city. The long run would be nice, but yeah, like a whole city. Yeah, of just those. It would be really weird. It probably feel I like a bunch of people shuffling around in a room. <laughs> <You> know, like, <laughs> just like the the crackle of gravel on the road and yeah, <laughs> occasional like, squeaky brakes. Yeah, I, ca I cannot uh, even imagine it uh, if I think about it, uh, about uh, this future soundscape of cities without uh, engines, uh, car engines, yeah. actually. It's weird, yeah, that <laughs> really. <be> weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've only, I've only experienced it as, like I said, like as a part of the soundscape feeling off, not, not <laughs> actually affecting the soundscape. We've got a ways to go for that. <laughs> <laughs> You electrify the gas inside and it lights up fluorescent and neon lights are pretty fascinating. Yeah, because there is gas that is... Uh, yeah. There is the electricity yeah. flowing into it. Uh, yeah, cars with, an with added, added combustion engine. Yeah. Oh, sorry, were you saying something? No, 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 no. I, I was reading the chat uh, <laughs> out loud. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think those those ones are weird in terms of the soundscape because I hear uh, they the engine starts every time, like if they're at a stop sign or stoplight, and then when they gotta go, the engine starts. So that <laughs> messes with when I'm driving. I'm used to the sound of the cars sitting there idling, and then when the light turns, they all the cars around me start to like, and then when I hear in the middle of that, like, like a car starting, uh, like it, it messes with me because I'm not used to that in my soundscape of sitting in my car and driving. <laughs> well, there, I think there is a certain degree of, uh, of um, connection with psychology and with the memories, of course. Uh, there is a soundscape of memories, actually. Some sounds that yeah. uh, evokes uh, something from your past. Uh, uh, 
Yeah. That's also one interesting point about the soundscape. There is also this inner soundscape in a, um, in a certain way. Um, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. For example, like can you think archiving. about a sound oh, right now in this moment? Can you think about the sound that reminds you exactly that situation, a certain situation? Do you have one sound? Thinking. You know, actually, it's kind of easy or kind of a cheat, but, but what I mentioned before, the sound of the factory here. But I guess that reminds me of a place, not a situation. Hmm. I'm trying to think of, yeah, because you'd mean like a certain time even. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm having troubles thinking of something, even though I know I do, because there's all these sounds that I could hear that would take me to these times. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it's a, it. It was Thank the you. question that it was too, too, you know, out of the blues. <laughs> yeah, but if I yeah, if I, I have to yeah. to think about an example in my experiences, uh, um, I don't know. There is uh, the sound of uh, something that I said before. For example, the sounds of uh, how my mother walks. So the rhythm of her footsteps. Uh, yeah, it's something that I that reminds me a certain moment of my life in the past when I was a child, yeah. and uh, yeah, it's it's there, it's there even if it's not uh, like this anymore. Maybe it, she changed the the way she walks a little bit because of the age, of course, because it, she's mm -hmm. becoming older. Uh, but yeah, I have that specific sound and it reminds me that specific situation and yeah, I think it's, this is part of my inner soundscape, for example. Yeah. Yeah, I guess it's not cheating as much when I think about it. It's just with the, by saying the sound of the factory or I kept, I was mentioning my boiler, uh, but it's only because I'm in this weird situation that I'm literally living in the house I grew up in. So, yeah, <laughs> which is a little <laughs> weird for a daily life. But yeah, so like when I hear that that boiler start up, it does take me back. But it also keeps me. It's weird because I've been here the whole time, too. So it's but not the whole time because I, I actually didn't live here for many, many years. And I like moved back in to this house. So like, but it, it does take me back. Yeah, like to like a certain like when i was a teenager it just also reminds me of now so it's kind of odd <laughs> conflicting feelings in my head yeah <laughs> for me it's the sound of my parents stove it takes me back to childhood yeah there is uh there is something probably we are we are not so used to think about sound as a source of memories but it is like uh, you know the the Proust Madeleine for speaking about taste, no? <laughs> um, mm, my favorite. Mm. <laughs> La recherche du temps perdu. Yeah. yeah. Don't get me started on the Madeleine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean that's like that, it's funny because I do think of you know memory is like such a huge, huge. It's like almost the only thing i think of with with when i make my own art so there are sounds that are like that um for me but it's i just don't know what they are like i guess that's why almost why i do make things because i can't say it i can just make it you know <laughs> i know yeah. that feeling <laughs> yeah <laughs> speaking yeah. from there are, uh... and that's... yeah yeah sorry Go, go, go. Yeah, so that's that's goes, I guess, kind of goes back into the, you know, what might be the importance of archiving things. It's like just so you could go back to those places if you want, you know, in a in, a, in your memory. Yeah, true, true, true. So there is also this personal level, uh, not only a, you know, more general purpose in archiving, there is also, of course, this personal level. Uh, yeah. Family memories yeah, I, are something that it it's hold as uh, as man probably mankind probably. Yeah. Yeah, which is interesting too because we don't think of like I guess we keep 
talking about recording again, but it's like, I guess because it's intrinsically related, but like the, if you think of having an album of soundscapes that would be familiar to a group of people, like almost like a, like a book of photos, you know, mm-hmm. like, yeah, like a family, like if your family, there's these places they were together, like where they lived especially, but other places they were together and you had this like collection of the recordings of those places you know just just what those places sounded like and how that would be interesting to listen to like with them later you know <laughs> yeah you see like, it's like oh do you what do you think of this like do you notice this and like especially like your house like you know someone like your parents would probably be like oh is that our house you know like they would probably <laughs> know and it'd be interesting to see that True, true. Oh, sorry, there is the cat that wants to go <laughs> out from the studio. <laughs> Bye, kitty. <laughs> I locked all my cats out of here because they were going to bother me. They were back. Before. <laughs> uh Okay, well, uh, I think uh, we are kind of near to the end. So, yeah, I think we touched a lot of uh, different uh, topics with this, uh, with this, uh, you know, soundscape concept uh, in, uh, in contemporary music, but not only in contemporary music. Uh, I think it's really something that uh, allows you to to connect to the past, to the present, and to the future in a certain way. Uh, it's an idea that can really lead uh, some, some movement, some changes, some evolution uh, in music, art, but not only, in, uh, also in architecture and in psychology and in politics. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, ecology, yeah. Ecology. There, are, there are a lot of uh, of, uh, of connections starting from this uh, focus of uh, the soundscape. Uh, yeah, it's super important. Nothing to yeah. say. It's really something that we need to explore more for sure. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I've learned a lot just from just like reading up a little about it before we talked and stuff. Like I said, I it was. A lot of these things I kind of thought of peripherally, but didn't realize there were like terms for, you know, <laughs> like I've got a actually pretty nice list of things I want to read now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah it's super. It's definitely probably going to create some more <laughs> when I go, <laughs> just keep go reading. <laughs> That's also the goal of these conversations. Uh, it's to, to create more questions than answers and more, uh, you know, more interest in the topic than, uh, you know, solutions. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. It worked. And <laughs> yeah, in the next episode, we will focus on other topics. I can make a little bit of a spoiler, probably. <laughs> uh, mm. We will talk about soundtracks. Ooh. We will talk about Ooh. radio. That is something really interesting <laughs> also. Yeah. And uh, we will talk about uh, other concepts, like, for example, Alia, the, the, the chance, uh, the, the reality as part of uh, a musical composition. Yeah, we, we will have uh, a lot of interesting topic to focus on, but I think that this first episode is super nice and there are a lot of, uh, of meat on the grill too <laughs> yeah 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 definitely it's I, i'm looking forward to all those that sounds really cool <laughs> i'll be there nice and also yeah. really much super thank you super thank you for yeah. for this uh, chat thank because you. it's yeah great yeah. Oh, thank thank you i like being able to talk about it <laughs> <laughs> nice nice so as a reminder to all the people that are watching or will watch this uh, this video later, um, follow the channel, please. <laughs> there is a counter down here, and uh, 
yeah, if you follow it and we reach the 50 subscriber, I can start to do more stuff with the channel. Uh, so yeah, it helps me a lot. Uh, so thank you very much for your support. It It's free. So yeah, basically, <laughs> if you're interested in the yeah. contents that we are creating in this channel, follow the channel. Uh, also, the live streams will be re-uploaded on my YouTube channel. If you, well, because I think that uh, Twitch, uh, Delete them like uh, after two weeks, probably. Uh, if I remember, because yeah. I'm, I'm learning a lot so, of stuff yeah. about Twitch, so I don't know exactly how it works in every single part. But yeah, I think they delete the 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 live streams at the end uh, of the two weeks uh, time spot. Yeah. So. It's so yeah, and but you can find the live streams on my YouTube channel. They are re-uploaded there. Uh, so of course, subscribe also to the YouTube channel. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and of course, if you want to support my work, there is a Patreon uh, where I publish like a lot of stuff, like sample packs and uh, dedicated videos and uh, rehearsals, uh, uh, all my albums and previews and etc. 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 So you can go there and support me even there. And yeah, I think that's it. I said all the stuff that is good to to tell like a streamer. <laughs> <laughs> well, the stuff I'm supposed to say. So yeah. It's worth um, it. I, I say go, go support Andrea. It's really worth it. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And yeah, again, thank you, Nick. Thank you to all the people in yeah. the chat. I hope to see you tomorrow with a new live stream at uh, 10 p.m. UTC. No, 10 p.m., sorry, uh, 9 p.m. UTC. Uh, next week, I'm also doing a, a very interesting thing. I'm doing, um, I'm sitting in a room uh, by Alvin Lucier. So one of the live stream will be dedicated to this composition by Alvin Lucier. If you don't know it, uh, go and check it out uh, on the internet. It's a super interesting uh, uh, composition from this uh, contemporary composer. Uh, and yeah, I don't want to spoil anything. <laughs> uh, yeah, see you tomorrow with... Uh, I'm sitting in a room and um, yeah, thank you. <laughs> and goodbye, everyone. Have a Bye. nice time, stay safe and yeah, see you soon. <laughs> Bye bye. Mm. Sorry. <laughs>